Hey guys, I'm Sun, I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. Uh, in today's episode, I was supposed to kind of follow up on last episode on, you know, cloud backups, Borg, but something is uh, happening here on Reddit. There is this thread that is trending, your computer isn't yours. Uh, so there is a, a security researcher called Jeffrey Paul that actually wrote this story that says that our Macs, when we open apps, the hash of the app is actually sent to Apple servers true and unencrypted uh, HTTP request. So what does that mean? That means that each time we open an app, mostly, uh, apparently those requests are cached, but anyways, each time we open an app, that is sent to Apple. And obviously since it's an HTTP request that includes our IP address, which can be jail located with a pretty accurate level of precision, uh, and nation state surveillance programs can definitely correlate that IP to us through our internet service providers. What that means is when we pop open Tor browser on our computer, for instance, something that we think is private, that's why we're using Tor. Well, our IP and a hash of the Tor app is sent to Apple servers. And again, that is sent in a way that isn't encrypted. So that means that for some reason, I'm not sure why Apple is doing that without encrypting the requests, but that means that we're really leaking the apps that we're using. That kind of reminds me uh, one of the previous episodes on how uh, when we use Spotlight, all of those things we type are sent to Apple. Uh, I'll link that in the description. But yeah, so there are there is a fix uh, that, that I'm gonna be recommending at the end of this episode, which involves using something in the terminal, but more of that at the end. I'll link something in the uh, timeline so you can just fast forward to that if you just want the answer. But what I really wanna do with you guys today is kinda show you how to see this stuff, how to see things that you don't usually see, uh, how to see those packets and kinda have a sense of what they include. Uh, usually that's pretty hard when stuff is encrypted, but given that is not encrypted, uh, it's pretty straightforward. So to do that, we're gonna be using an app called Wireshark. It's an open source project that allows us to essentially wiretap everything that's going in and out on one of our network interfaces. Uh, so first things first, uh, we need to know what IP address we're looking for because, or else it's kind of like a needle in a haystack. A lot of stuff is going in and out from our computers. So we do know that the uh, domain name that is receiving those requests is ocsp.apple.com. So if I do a ping on it, I can see that uh, those requests are sent to IP 17.253.63.201. Uh, I think that if we create a filter with those two first uh, parts, we're gonna be good. So if I pop open Wireshark and I type in the search or filter uh, bar, IP host matches, blah, blah, blah. And I start sniffing traffic here. Oh, actually, I'm doing it on IPsec zero. You guys would probably do it on EN zero if you're not using a VPN, but since I am, I have to track the actual traffic at the VPN layer. Okay, so once this is done, uh, if I pop open an app, I should see all of those packets that match 17.253 IP. Uh, so if I pop open Tor, boom, all of this here, that's, it's, whew. I'm glad this worked in the demo because I, I wasn't able to rehearse it. As I said earlier, those requests are cached anyways. So what is really, really scary here is I'm using Tor because I want privacy, but yet my computer is broadcasting an HTTP request that isn't encrypted and that includes a hash here, okay? And what I was able to corroborate is that that hash ME4W uh, let's have a look at this more in detail. Okay, so that hash here, uh, actually probably the whole thing, that is the same for, you know, Tor. I would like you guys to confirm that if you want in the comments, but if it's true, if that is true, it means that we're broadcasting in clear text that we're using Tor, and that is linked to our IP address, which is pretty mind blowing. Now. Thankfully, if we're using a VPN that is well configured, at least the IP that they would see is the IP of the VPN. So once again, using a VPN is a pretty important part of our privacy stack. But as mentioned in a whole bunch of episodes, not all VPNs are the same. Um, okay, so as we can see here, all of this stuff is going true. Now, 
there is a hack, and that's what I mentioned at the uh, beginning of this episode, that involves, actually, let's dig into this a tiny bit more. So our computers, uh, in the context of DNS, when our computer wants to hit this specific domain name, it doesn't know which IP address is behind it, and we need that IP so that our computer using our IP can communicate with the server to that IP. Woo, that's a lot of stuff. Okay, so we need to be able to resolve the IP address of that domain name, and that's done through the domain name system. Now, uh, there is a really interesting file on our computer, not cd cat slash etc slash hosts. That's a file that allows us to override the DNS system. Uh, and we can actually add this here. So 1777, uh, 127.0.0.1, that's localhost. We can tell our computer, yo, when this domain name is hit, redirect it to that, and that creates a localhost loop. And enter, now we need to enter our password, demo computer, shitty password. If we look at this file again, we'll see that the entry is there. So what that means is, if I stop this here and I flush it, uh, continue without saving, and I start inspecting IPsec again, if I open another app, uh, we'll give it just a little bit of time in case uh, the DNS settings are cached. If we open another app, in theory, it shouldn't go true. Now, I'll demo this in a second. This is a good time to mention Little Snitch. So Jeffrey in his story, okay, now it's been possible up until today to block this sort of stuff on your Mac using a program called Little Snitch. Really the only thing keeping me from uh, keeping me using macOS at this point. I totally agree. I haven't created an episode on Little Snitch yet. It's something that you have to pay for. I will definitely create an episode on Little Snitch. I am using Little Snitch. I also trust myself using Mac more because of Little Snitch. So more on that, uh, more on that in a future episode. Um, okay. So if we go back to Wireshark and I pop open Signal, for instance, as you can see, so far nothing is going true. Uh, into this now. Okay, that's good. I was hoping I wasn't gonna <laughs> reveal anything here. And if I pop open Visual Studio Code, uh, in theory, same thing, nothing going true. So as you guys can see, there is a really simple fix. I'm not sure why in the world Apple would not at least use HTTPS. I mean, that means that anyone, pretty much anyone on the internet can see which apps we're using. Wow. Okay, anyways, that's all I have for you today. Please run this command, at least until uh, privacy and security researchers uh, go to the bottom of this. I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but thankfully there's a way of, of you know blocking it. Little Snitch is another solution. And actually, before I let you go, um, I'm gonna, tr probably in the comments, I'm gonna be releasing other domain names that are actually also uh, being hit by Trust D, which is the, uh, daemon on macOS that is actually uh, sending those requests. So I'll be putting other domain names there. I'm gonna try to collaborate also with Jeffrey to put together a list so that other uh, domains can be added to uh, the host file. So anyways, that's all I have for you today. I'll be back to the board episode shortly, maybe even later today, I'm not sure, but yeah, that had to come out, bye.